every, every single file format on your computer follows an arbitrary convention that cannot be derived from the laws of physics and is immaterial. It's not matter, it's not energy. It's stored and transmitted in matter and energy, but it's neither. And you can't derive any of those things just from, just from uh, the laws of physics. This, this takes materialism as a philosophy out. The existence of information is a complete affront to materialistic philosophy. So I have this proof of an intelligent designer. This is not a deductive proof. This is an, an inductive inference. Okay? I have, to, I have to qualify the word proof. It's proof to the extent that science can prove anything. Number one, DNA is a code. Number two, all codes we know the origin of are designed. Therefore, DNA is designed. We have 100% inference that DNA is designed and 0% inference that it is not. Now, what can science prove? Science can only make probabilistic statements. I drop a weight from the balcony and it falls at 9.8 meters per second squared and I do it over and over and over and over and over again and I come to the conclusion there's a gravitational constant 9.8 meters per second squared and if I do it again I'm going to get the same result again. Can you prove deductively that you will get the same result again? No, you cannot. Okay? You cannot deductively prove that the sun is going to come up tomorrow. But you can inductively infer with 100% accuracy that gravity is a constant and the thing's going to fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. You can, you can deduct with 100% accuracy that heat, when you, when you put your toast in the toaster and you toast it and put it on the counter, you can, you can infer with 100% success that the toast is going to get colder, not hotter. That's the laws of thermodynamics. By the exact same reasoning, I can prove that life is designed. Now, I, again, I, I have been debating this for three years, and nobody has found a hole to punch in this. I've been on the Infidels Web Forum, which is the biggest atheist website in the world, for a year and a half, and the moderator of the Infidels Forum has been trying to tell me that DNA is not really a code, that they didn't mean for me to take those biology books literally. You can go read it. Go to CosmicFingerprints.com slash Infidels. You'll see a link. and You can read 600 posts and listen to a bunch of atheists try to tell you that DNA is not a code. Okay, but if we can trust our science books, if we can trust induction, we know by inference that life was designed. So where did the information in DNA come from? You got five possibilities. One, it was designed by humans. Since all the other codes we know of were designed by humans, that it was designed by humans. Um, does anybody believe that DNA was designed by humans? Designed by aliens. Now, that is a philosophically, that is a perfectly legitimate option. Does it answer any questions, though? No, it just moves the question back further. It doesn't answer anything, really. It's a product of chance. Now, if you look up the word science in a dictionary, it says science is something like science is the systematic exploration and discovery of, law, of, of laws. Okay? It's systematic experiment. You know, I do an experiment, I get a result, I do an experiment, I get a result, and I presume underlying order in order to have a repeatable pattern. Science by, by definition, has to be systematic. This explanation, by definition, is an anti-scientific explanation. Oh, it just happened. Oh, really? Well, how are you going to reproduce that? Oh, well, unfortunately, you can't. Okay, so we just stop and say chance did it? 
Is that what we do? We just throw up our hands and say, oh, it just happened by accident. I mean, I don't see how that furthers scientific inquiry. Number four. Undiscovered law of physics. That's a perfectly legitimate position to take. Now, how would you discover such a law of physics? Well, first you would have to discover a naturally occurring code, and then you could formulate a hypothesis about how that natural process proceeded, and you could observe that natural process and formulate a law of physics. Totally legitimate. But first you have to have a naturally occurring code. I don't know of one. Nobody in three years that I've been giving these presentations has ever been able to think of one. Well, what? Stars are codes? No, they're not. They don't symbolically represent anything but themselves. Gravity is a code? No, gravity is not a code. By any communication engineer's definition of code, gravity is not a code. Um, snowflakes are codes? No. Snowflakes do not symbolically represent anything other than themselves. Five, designed by God. Now, I think in this particular instance, one has to use the word God somewhat liberally. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, another word would be an intelligence with a capital I. I mean, you know, some... And, and, and as far as we've gone this far, it could, it could be, you know, Shiva or Buddha or whatever. Okay? I mean, we haven't got that far. And that's like a whole other conversation that we don't have time for today. But you come to inevitable conclusion, you got option one, two, three, four, or five. Really, the, the, the only one that fits the data that we have is an intelligence that proceeds and is outside of pure matter and energy. So this leads me to formulate what I affectionately call the atheist riddle. Show me a message that doesn't come from a mind. Just one. Is my theory falsifiable? Yes. Just show me a message that doesn't come from a mind. So simple, any child can understand. So complex, no atheist can solve. 